the war is ending. Like any sovereign, independent nation, Iraq is free to chart its own course. And by the end of next year, all of our troops will be home. It seems an age ago that joyous Iraqis tore down the huge statue of Saddam Hussein that dominated Ferdos Square in central Baghdad. That was seven years ago. The apparent jubilation was tempered by violence, as some celebrated. Others took pot shots at US Marines as they helped topple the effigy. Now, as the US prepares to pull out, there's still no Iraqi government in place six months after the election to plan the post-2011 scenario. Many believe Iraq has now reached a form of stability, yet it's a raw stability, a stability that includes regular attacks against the fledgling Iraqi security services. As the clock ticks down on the US combat mission, Iraq is on its highest level of alert. The authorities have warned of plots to sow fear and chaos and undermine the confidence of the newly trained Iraqi military. Senior Iraqi intelligence officers have indicated that suicide bombers have entered the country with plans to strike unspecified targets in Baghdad over the next few weeks. Insurgents have already intensified raids on police and soldiers, making August the deadliest month for security personnel in two years. Many Iraqis have lost faith in their leaders and see a future blighted by sectarian violence, as well as violence there's also poverty. It's very important that post-conflict or, or transition countries, because part of it is still conflict, um, receive sufficient support for a certain period. Because statistics show that uh, you know, the majority of post-conflict situations plunge back into conflict within seven years. According to the UN, 1.5 million are displaced inside Iraq and 500,000 are housed in squatter camps with only basic sanitation and electricity. It's a volatile mix.